This is a basic school video on how to divide using the bus stop method. When asked what dividing is, Google will tell you that it is a way to separate or to separate into parts. I like to think of it as a way of counting. We're used to counting in ones, starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Dividing is a way of counting but in a different number system. For instance, if we counted a 2, so it goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. If I was asked the question, what is 10 divided by 2, I'd think of counting in 2s and thinking how many jumps it would take. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now this idea is absolutely fine when we're using numbers that are quite easy to work with, but take that idea further. What if I was to ask you something like, what is 16 divided by 3? Well, I'd be counting in threes. So 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Now 16 doesn't fit on there. If I was to count in threes, I know it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 jumps. But if I was to jump one more, then I would go above 16. I'd go to 18. So what we do is we say that it is five full jumps from here, and then I count the difference that is left. So I got to 15, so I had five with one remaining. If I was to relate that question to something that you might see in everyday life, if you went to the supermarket and these cans of Coke were on sale for £3 each, you want to buy as many as you possibly can and you have £16 in your wallet. And they cost £3 each, so we're counting in threes. So that means I can buy one pack, two packs, three packs, four packs, five packs, but I cannot afford to buy six packs. If I went to the till with six packs and said, here we go, they'd ring it up as £18. And I'd say, well, I only have £16. And they'd say, well, unfortunately, you cannot buy six packs. You can buy five packs because you can afford five packs, but you will have one pound change. And when you have another two pounds, come back and you can buy the sixth pack. So what we're doing here is £16 divided by three, and then we're finding that the answer is five packs of cans of Coke that we can buy, but you'd also have one remainder. Going further into the theory of this, I want to consider the question, what is 414 divided by 3? Well, that means I'm going to be counting the 3, so I've already written that scale out there. And this is when I use this method called the bus stop. I would rewrite this question so that the divider, 3, comes outside the bus stop, and inside the bus stop goes 414. What I'm doing now is I'm saying how many 3's go into 4. So I'm counting on my scale. From 0 to 3, that's 1 jump. Now clearly, if I jump on 1 more, if I go on to 6, that is too much. I can never go too far. So it only goes in once. But there is one remainder, and this one remainder comes with the next digit by here. So now, this number here is no longer 1, it is 11. Now I'm looking at how many 3's go into 11. So I count here, 1, 2, 3, and it doesn't go quite far enough. 12 is bigger than 11. So my answer is 3, but I would have a remainder. I got to 9 on my scale, but I was supposed to get to 11. So I'd look at the difference from 9 and 11, and that answer is 2. So that becomes my remainder, which goes on to the next number. So this is not 4 anymore, it's 24. Finally, I'd see how many 3's go into 24, and I'd count the jumps there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the answer there is 8. So my final answer is 138. Here is another question. This time I'm asking to divide by 5. Now because I'm asking to divide by 5, I need to start counting the 5's. We always start at 0, and we're counting 5, so 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way up to 45 and 50. 
You only need to know up to 10 times 10 to use this method also. Next, you would write the divisor, 5, outside the bus stop. So 5 would come by here, and you would draw your bus stop, and inside here goes 4, 2, 7, 5. In this case here, 5 going into 4, we cannot even do that first count. 0 to 5 isn't a jump. If this number here is ever smaller than this number here, the divider, the answer straight away is 0, and this 4 becomes a remainder. Some people like to put a line through their working there as well. It doesn't particularly bother me, but some people do like to do it. Now I'm looking at how many 5s go into 42. So I count on my scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 and then not the ninth one. So my answer is 8 and my remainder from 40, which is this number here, to 42, is a remainder, again, of 2. Now I'd like to know how many 5s go into 27. So again, back to the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and a bit, so my answer would be 5, and I was on 25, and I had to get to 27. So again, the remainder is 2. Finally, I need to know how many 5s go into 25, and this time it does fit perfectly. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So my answer is 5. So the answer to 4,000 275 divided by 5 is 855. This zero in front of the numbers here is not needed to be set. Have a go at this question here. I'll show you the method in a moment. Here is the solution. Pause the video if you'd like to have a further look. The good thing about the bus stop method is even if there's a remainder at the end, you can still carry on with the bus stop and you can still find out what the full solution should be. Take this question here, 37 divided by 4. Well, first of all, we should be counting in 4s. Now, when you start doing this question, you'll see, first of all, that there's no jump between 4 going into 3. As we said before, if this number is less than this number, then this answer is going to be 0. So now that 3 becomes a remainder, and now we're looking for where it goes into 37. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 jumps, 9 and a bit jumps, so we're going to write down 9, but now we know we need to count from 36 up to 37, which is a remainder of 1. Now our students know that these are in column order, so this here is a 10, and this is a unit, so we would encourage to ask them, we'd say, well what comes after the unit, and they should be able to tell us that there's a decimal point that comes next. And then after the decimal point would be a tenth. And there's no number there at the moment, but after a decimal point, we know there's always a zero. We just don't bother to write it. So we extend our bus stop as such. You must make sure that this decimal point floats up to above where the answer is as well, in line with the decimal point below. Now that remainder of 1 from before, from the 36 going into the 37, we're now going to write that by here. So now I want to know how many 4s go into 10. So I do my count. 1, 2, 2 and a bit more. So if I look at the difference of where we got to, we got to 8, we we're supposed to get to 10. That gives a difference of 2. So I would carry on my bus stop again and write another 0 after the decimal point. I'd then put that remainder from before where we had how many 10s, how many 4s go into 10. We got to 8 and we said there was a remainder of 2, would come with this 0 now. And then I'd look at how many 4s go into 20. And I'd count on my line, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So my answer there is 5, and I can finish now because my, answer, my question was how many 4s go into 20, and it's finished completely there.